All right, everyone, I am an enemy of government regulation, except in one supreme essence, and this is the only purpose of government regulation, which is to reduce abuse and victimization. It's really the role of government at large anyway. In the internal sense, it maintains courts and law enforcement to prevent internal victimization. Externally, it maintains a military presence in order to guard against victimization by other countries, whether it be fiscal or in the more tangible sense, getting bombed, uh, getting subverted by terrorists or something. That's the proper role of government, to try to reduce abuse. When the government becomes too large, too broad in scope, the government typically becomes the abuser, and since it can legalize its own abuse, this is why I'm a constitutionalist and believe in massively expanding individual and local liberty at the expense of the state by and large. But when corporations, which have become enormous and in some cases vertically monopolistic, begin abusing segments of the population, then it needs to have some sort of fix. Now, free market solution is always best. In certain uh, parts of the economy, though, really functionally it's difficult to have a truly free market. So for everything else, there's unfortunately, I would say, the state. This proposed regulation, link in the description, I strongly support. And what this would do and everyone should write their uh, Congress people and say, yeah, it's a great idea, speak up in support of it very publicly, or your governor or whatever. This would prevent banks from blacklisting people for their political speech. And we've seen it happen before. We've seen people kicked out by their banks, by credit cards and so forth, uh, not just in the U.S., but in other countries too, simply because their political ideology is considered risky by the bank. They use the, the broad interpretation of risk and they say, well, this person, because they are a MAGA populist, is more likely to engage in violence. Uh, here's a statistic showing it. So we can prevent them from banking. No, 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 says this regulation. You cannot, because their speech is legal. What they're doing is not actually harming anyone. They're simply making a YouTube video or a blog post or putting out a circular. That's not a legitimate reason to ban them from financial services. I've made the argument now for years that if you want to have a truly robust, strong economy, a strong civic culture, you cannot treat people in that manner, even if it is broadly legal to do, as it currently is, and it shouldn't be, and this is what this regulation seeks to tie up. It is a terrible idea for any country to begin doing this. What you do, if the, if the United States doesn't disallow banks to do this, and you're a political dissident, and all the US banks say, I don't wanna work with you, you might end up using a foreign bank. You're literally, you're causing citizens to pay foreign countries. We see this with alt tech. Increasingly, a lot of the services and apps and everything, they're developed outside of the United States. Tech censorship is the same risk. We risk losing tech hegemony in the US and the West more broadly because of attacks on free speech. Because if people can't, if people will speak freely, they will find a platform to speak on. If it's not a US company, it'll be a company in Russia, a company in the UK, a company in Thailand. Maybe an Australian firm. Well, probably not. They're even more draconian than we are. Brazil. Brazil could end up having, instead of Silicon Valley, you'll have Amazon Valley or something like that. And then they'll get sued by Jeff Bezos for a copyright infringement. Uh, you could end up, over the next 10 to 20 years, with a major shift of main tech. And also, and this is what this is addressing, banking away from the United States. That would be a disaster for the U.S. economy. If we, if we lose critical aspects of tech and banking, you know how many millions of jobs are tied up just directly in these firms? A, a handful, a couple of the biggest banks and a couple of the biggest Silicon Valley firms, millions and millions of jobs in the direct sense, plus millions, possibly tens of millions more attendant upon the growth and the consumerism that goes on because of that. Now, do I care if the San Francisco region is depopulated and becomes ghettoized? No, I really don't. It's the best thing that could happen to San Francisco. At some point, it's going to fall into the ocean in a 9.0 earthquake anyway. So fuck it. It's basically a lost cause. The fact that Google, uh, Google probably has plenty of server backups in more uh, sedentary areas of the world, like, I don't know, Texas. Don't they have servers around Dallas or some shit like that, too? Or Austin? <laughs> it's not all, trust me, it's not all within 10 miles of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, in an area that could also get hit by a hundred foot wall of water at any given time. 
But I think I strongly support this. And again, when a libertarian, fundamentally, is supporting a government regulation, uh, <laughs> you know that there's a legitimate reason for it. And it's not just because I don't want to look forward to the day that I get a letter from my bank saying, oh yeah, well, we consider you too risky because those cooking videos are getting too edgy. You made an Elian Gonzalez joke about floating cranberries and we're very uncomfortable with this. And so we're basically giving you 60 days to move your money somewhere else. I don't want to get that letter. And there are other Americans that have the whole concept of free speech, free expression, free assembly, the right to defend yourself, privacy and so forth, is being nullified by corporations. And that's what banks are. And insofar as these banks take broad protection from the government, guaranteed by taxpayer money, they should be subject to reasonable levels of regulation, forcing them to platform people for financial reasons. If the person's doing something shifty with their money, that's one thing. If the person is just buying random shit off eBay, then it shouldn't matter whether they're a goddamn skinhead. Their money, centrally guaranteed by the state, should be considered identical and just as good as anyone else's. They're a communist, they're a skinhead, they're wacky, who cares? Religious zealot versus apolitical. It doesn't really matter. It's the same fucking Benjamins that they're dumping into the account, getting taxed at the same rate, which outflow from the country at the same rate if they get to platform. I argue the same of tech. You have not just 230 protections, but broad taxpayer subsidies, number one in California, number two federally, various protections, lobbying, the platforming of government officials and services such as USGS, weather alerts from NOAA, all being taxpayer funded. You've got NPR and everything else on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube. They are platforms. They need to act like it. They should be prevented from not doing business with people who are otherwise acting lawfully. They should not be stymieing and algorithmically demoting information. They should be neutral carriers, just like a phone company or your gas company. Your phone company cannot disconnect your phone number based on your political ideology. The gas company cannot shut off your heating because you said something edgy on the internet. That's how these firms should work too. Make all the money you want, be monopolistic if you want. Who cares as long as you're a neutral carrier? That's what we need. I strongly support this. You should write your congressman. You should write your governor. You should send him an email, send in a phone call, whatever. Talk about this and propose that it be passed, that it be, be binding, that the regulation be put into effect. That's about all. Peace out.